Civil Society Organization Accountability Now says that it would have been valuable for the country if the state capture report corrected the error. <clears throat> I beg your pardon, still getting there. Um, uh, basically, it would have been valuable had the state capture report corrected the error made in the initial report on the status of the joint judgment of former Deputy Chief Justice Tihang Wasineke and former Concord Judge Edwin Cameron regarding the Glenister case. Now, the case relates to the disbanding of the Directorate of Special Operations, which was a specialized crime fighting unit that was located within the National Prosecuting Authority, the NPA. And the unit was dissolved and then replaced by the Directorate of Priority Crime Investigation, or the DPCI, which is located within the South African Police Service. The Concord ruled that the state has an obligation to establish an independent anti-corruption body. Now, Accountability Now Director Advocate uh, Paul Hoffman joins us now virtually just to give us more clarity on these assertions. Uh, Professor Hoffman, thanks for being with us. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning to you and thank you for the uh, promotion. I'm just an advocate, not a professor, but uh, we'll, we'll let that slide. This is an important judgment and it is the, uh, the judgment that binds the state to put in place the type of anti-corruption machinery that can protect the human rights of our population and comply with our international obligations. The trouble is, as far as the Zondo Commission is, is concerned, is that the report, very first chapter of the report that came out in January this year, uh, describes the judgment that you have just mentioned, that of Deputy Chief Justice Mosineki and Justice Cameron, as a minority judgment. Uh, the, the, the difficulty is that it is a majority judgment and as such, it is binding on the government. In particular, it is binding on Parliament because the result of that case was to order Parliament to, to put remedial legislation in place in order to create an adequately independent corruption fighting unit. That hasn't happened. The, uh, the, the situation at the moment is that South Africa is sitting with a 10-year backlog of corruption cases and mainly because the the hawks or what you called the directorate for priority crime investigation not really been up to the task of dealing with serious corruption as it has arisen during the the state capture period and indeed beyond the uh, the state capture period so it would in the amendment of the Zondo Commission report where typographical errors and some incorrect numbers were, were tidied up and the oversight in relation to uh, making recommendations about the fate of former Cabinet Minister Malusi Gigaba had also included a reference to the binding nature of the decision made by Judges Mosineki and Cameron. The importance is that if that judgment is regarded as it should be, as the binding blueprint for our anti-corruption machinery of state, then the, uh, the response of the government to the Zondo Commission report should be to give proper implementation of that judgment priority attention right now. So what legal weight and impact would such clarity by the commission in its report have had on the specialized law enforcement agencies and the fight against corruption in South Africa? Well, what we know is one of the reasons for creating the State Capture Commission was for it to make recommendations as to how to prevent state capture from ever happening again in South Africa, because it has been very expensive and really quite disastrous for the well-being of poor people in South Africa and indeed the entire economy. So the uh, viewing that judgment of Mosineki and Cameron as a judgment that 
binds and guides the implementation of the law as interpreted in the Glenister case ought to have been one of the first recommendations of the Zondo Commission. But because the judgment was misread, and it's not difficult to understand why, because the, the way that the Glenister judgment is constructed and the minority judgment is the main judgment in the case, the, the, uh, the State Capture Commission has put out there that the uh, judgment of the Deputy Chief Justice and Justice Cameron was a minority judgment which does not bind those involved in the case, whereas in fact it was the majority judgment and it does bind the President and our Parliament because they were both uh, the parties uh, officially to the, uh, to, to the case that Mr. Glenister brought because he was not satisfied that the Hawks were an adequate replacement for the Scorpions. And Mr. Glenister has been proved right in that because uh, since the dissolution of the Scorpions, the uh, quality and quantity of anti-corruption work done by the Criminal Justice Administration in South Africa has taken a precipitous nosedive, so much so that today a retired judge of the uh, Constitutional Court, Mr. Justice Richard Goldstone, has described the NPA as gutted and uh, hollowed out is the term that the National Director of Public Prosecutions herself uses. And what, what we have is really a lack of uh, capacity, skill and resources to take on the onerous work of fighting corruption wherever it uh, occurs in South Africa, and particularly where it is of uh, such a serious nature that it um, threatens the future of the democratic project, or as the judges put it in poetic style, it threatens to fell at the knees everything we hold dear in our nascent constitutional democracy. So if we look at that judgment, um, Hugh Glenister successfully argued that the South African Constitution in fact imposes an obligation on the state to establish and to maintain an independent anti-corruption body. And the court then, if I understand it correctly, left it to Parliament uh, to amend the necessary legislation. Now, in the judgment, the DPCI was found not to be sufficiently independent. Now, how has that been addressed uh, in your view, Advocate Hoffman? And what remains lacking or do we need a complete overhaul gear once again? Yes, you, you're quite right. That's a very good summary you've just given of what, what actually uh, went down in the Glenister case. What the judges said was, we don't make laws, we defer to Parliament and to the executive, but we expect you to make the reasonable decision of a reasonable decision maker in the circumstances. And in making that decision, the court set out various criteria that ought to inform the amendment of the legislation, the reform of the system of criminal justice in such a way that corruption is dealt with adequately. And what, what the uh, criteria are called, or the main criteria are called, is the STIRS criteria. And that acronym, S-T-I-R-S, -S, stands for specialized, which means that you only deal with corruption and you don't do, deal with a whole lot of priority crimes. Training, which means that the uh, personnel used in the state's anti-corruption entity uh, is, is up to the task of dealing with the ways and the wiles of the corrupt, who are very resourceful, very clever, and very adaptable. Then the main criterion is the independence, and that means independence of political control and interference, as President Ramaphosa said in a recent SONA, that body ought to report to Parliament, not to the executive, so that 
a multi-party body is the accounting line of the corruption busters, not uh, the uh, executive, which as we all know, is currently dominated by only one political party. The R in STIRS stands for resourcing that is guaranteed and adequate. If you don't put petrol in the tank, the car doesn't go anywhere. If you don't resource your anti-corruption machinery, it doesn't go anywhere either. And we have seen that in the last 10 years where there are a lot of vacancies in the Hawks, a lot of vacancies in the NPA, and a lack of uh, resources to bring to bear against events like state capture and grand corruption, kleptocracy, and the, the uh, activities of those who are just allowing their greed to repurpose the state for their own uh, satisfaction. The last S in STIRS is really the most important from the point of view of learning a lesson from the demise of the, uh, the, the Scorpions unit. The last S stands for secure in tenure of office. The Scorpions, who were part of the NPA, were created by an ordinary statute which could be amended or repealed at the instance of a simple 50% majority in Parliament. A proper STIRS compliant anti-corruption unit ought to have secure tenure of office such as that which is enjoyed by Chapter 9 institutions, which can't be closed down by a simple majority in Parliament, a two-thirds majority would be required. So had the Scorpions had the protection of the uh, Chapter 9 uh, architecture of the Constitution, they would still be with us today, and state capture would probably not have happened, or if it had happened, it would have been nipped in the bud rather quickly by uh, the people's advocates who worked in the Scorpions uh, at, at, at the, uh, the time until their demise in 2009. So just going back to the R in your uh, STIRS acronym there and what that stands for, um, and add to that your earlier point about uh, the NPA being hollowed out, what is your assessment of the state capture report in its entirety? And notwithstanding that most of the commissions that we've seen in South Africa have seemingly yielded not much fruit to talk about and uh, very little accountability. Um, instead, there is a view in this country that uh, commissions uh, such as these are a waste of state resources uh, because you can point to anyone previously. Take uh, the Sariti Commission, for example, on the arms deal. Um, and, and, and the outcome there. So many South Africans feel that this is just a waste of time. What is your view on that and the state capture report as a whole? Uh, I agree with you that uh, commissions of inquiry are in the public imagination given higher status than they deserve. The commission of inquiry of this kind is simply an extension of the executive branch of government uh, that is given the task of teasing out the facts in a disputed uh, factual matrix and of making recommendations. So there are findings of fact which bind nobody and there are recommendations which equally bind nobody. But the, the, um, the State Capture Commission has done wonderful service for South Africa. We ought to be grateful that all of the dark corners of State Capture uh, have uh, that, that are covered in the report, and it's certainly not all of the state capture that has taken place at municipal and provincial level, for example. That exercise has put government in a position to understand what went on and to consider what to do about it. And in the course of this week, or maybe next week, we are expecting to hear a response from the president in relation to the recommendations that have been made by the Zondo Commission. Now, certainly a lot of people think that a commission of inquiry is just a place to park a political hot potato until it cools off and then everybody forgets about it. But the Nugent Commission 
had its recommendations implemented and SARS is back on its feet. If the recommendations of the Zondo Commission uh, are, are properly considered by government, then it will be necessary to reform the Criminal Justice Administration to dispense with the practice of CADA deployment in the public administration and in the state-owned enterprises, to reconsider our electoral system in order to make parliamentarians more accountable to ordinary people and less accountable to the party bosses who get them into parliament by putting their name high enough on the party lists that are prepared in the system that we have in place at the moment. And last but not least, the, the, the lot of our precious whistleblowers will have to be improved by way of remedial legislation or by way of adjustment of the way that uh, disclosures are made by uh, the uh, brave people who are prepared to blow the whistle on uh, serious corruption as it occurs. So if those four uh, areas are dealt with appropriately in the, uh, the response of the uh, president to the recommendations of the Zondo Commission, then we will indeed have seen a billion rand of taxpayers' money well spent on the Zondo uh, Commission report, and we will see the necessary reforms, not only of the criminal justice administration and the electoral system, but also of the way in which our public administration functions uh, put in place to the advantage of all of the people of South Africa, to the benefit of the poor, the unemployed, and those who still bear the brunt of the inequality that has persisted in South Africa, despite what the Constitution requires of government in that regard. Well, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Accountability Now's Director Advocate Paul Hoffman discussing uh, the amended Zonda report with us. Always want to hear your views. Let us know at Morning Live SABC.